Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel again, here Beto Modano with another video. And today's video we're going to be doing this cool 2D game using only JavaScript, CSS and a little bit of HTML. This tutorial guys, it's perfect for those who want to learn more about the basics of how to build a website and maybe having some physics uh, like in this video. I mean, it's not real physics, but simulations of physics and movement and how to keep track of the keys that the user press on the keyboard. And basically, this is what we are going to be building today, guys. So if you are interested in this tutorial, stick to the video. And of course, there's a live demo on the description of this video. You can check it out by yourself. And if you want to check the code, you can go to Code with Beto. I'm going to leave the link in the description below and let's start. All right, guys. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this out of the way and we are going to start by creating a folder in which we're in which we are going to be building our project in our files of JavaScript, HTML and CSS. I'm going to start by going to my carpet or the folder where I want my project and that is on my test folder on my desktop. Uh, of course you can do this with your mouse like right click and hit create folder but there's a way to do it in our terminal if we if we type mkdir which which means make directory and now we need to give it a name I'm gonna say epic game, hit enter. Now we can access to this carpet and open it on Visual Studio or whatever text editor you are using for your code. I'm just gonna uh, put here code dot and that is gonna open uh, this uh, folder in my code editor. So now I have here my Visual Studio code as you can see and I'm gonna fix it so you can see like this and the first thing that I'm going to do is that we need to create the main files that we are going to be using through our application right so I'm going to start by saying index.html this is going to be the file the entry file for our website or for our application and in this index, we are going to have um, basic HTML. I'm going to show you um, in one moment. Um, I'm going to bring here my uh, Google Chrome because we are going to be watching what we have here in the Explorer. So that's the magic of using vanilla JavaScript is that you don't need anything else to compile your code, just an explorer, just in this case, we're gonna be using Chrome, but you can use Safari, uh, Opera Mini, whatever you wanna use, okay? So let's start by, by saying doc type HTML. <clears throat> and this tag, guys, it's, it's the, um, we have to put this tag because this way we are, we are saying that this document or this uh, file it's gonna be an HTML and then we have to put another tag that is gonna be our HTML tag actually so let's say HTML like this and inside this HTML we're gonna have two tags the first one is gonna be our head tag and the second one is gonna be our body tag all right and um, I'm going to say head, this is my head tag, and I'm going to leave it empty, empty for now. And I'm going to put down here my body tag, like this. And this is a, the important tag, the body, because inside the body we are going to put whatever we want to have in our page, right? Or in this HTML. Um, file. So now um, 
I'm going to say for, for now, just to see what, what happens, I'm going to put a header one. So I put H1 and we can put some text for this header, like this is an epic game, for example. And if I hit save, guys, that's pretty much all we need to start watching what we are doing. So I'm going to go to my file index in my explorer and I'm gonna drag this file to my um, to my browser. So so then so not so that we can see what we are doing. As you can see there, we have our header that says this is an epic game, right? And that's the simplicity of using HTML, guys. Literally, you don't need anything but um, the HTML, right? Of course, we, we want to use the Visual Studio Code because it's more uh, easy to having this syntax highlights and uh, and everything, right? It's, I mean, you could do this using another text editor like Word, for example, or Notes, but um, Visual Studio Code, it's a good approach and you're going to have this cool uh, syntax highlight and you can also add some stuff like um, extensions that help you to speed up your development, right? So let's start working in the head and I'm gonna say uh, title. Here we can set a title for our application. I'm gonna put Epic Game. And if I hit save now and I'm going, and I'm going here in Reload, now we can see that our uh, our website or has a title that says Epic Game. We can also add a tag called Meta. And this tag, uh, we, we have to set the char set or the characters that are gonna be allowed in our application. By default or, I mean, not by default, but everyone uh, almost use it, almost every, every, every time they use UTF-8. This means that if your application is going to be used in another country, for example, in China, I mean, not in China, but for example, in Brazil, where they have uh, some characters that they that we don't have here in the US, using UTF um, HTML knows that they can translate to those characters that we don't have here, all right? And that's pretty much what we need for our index HTML guys. I'm gonna go ahead and wanna create another file for our uh, styles and for our uh, engine like G, uh, that is gonna be the JavaScript part, okay? So let's start with the style. And now that I'm here, I'm going to create uh, my JavaScript file. I'm gonna call it main.js and this file mainly it's going to contain everything um, to achieve the functionality of this application, right? So now let's go to the index HTML and we have to add these two new files that we just created. Because remember, the index HTML, it's the entry point to our uh, application. So we need to link the main and the style, right? So to, to link this style, we can use this link tag. And inside this tag, we can add a property called real that comes from relation and the relation to this file, it's a style sheet. So you can say style sheet like this. And now we need to put uh, a reference of this file, which means the root to this file and since we have all these files in their root directory, I mean, on, I mean, what I'm saying, it's on the same folder. We don't need to put anything else, just the name, style.css, like that. And for the script, <clears throat> excuse me, for the script, we can just add a tag script and say a property source. And same thing, we need to put the, um, main, the name of the file, in this case, main.js, like that. <clears throat> all right, and that's it. That's all we need to do to um, to tell this index HTML that we are gonna be using these uh, files, right? So let's save that, and now we can start 
working in these two files and we will see um, like the changes in our index HTML or in our page in our browser right so let's just start by going into our maybe styles yeah because we we are gonna need uh, some styles for this application when you start um, a new brand new website and you're gonna be using vanilla you want to set some styles that it, that are going to be applied globally to your application or to our website right so let's start by saying that everything inside the body is gonna have some style right how can we do that we can access to uh, tags complete tags like this we're gonna say body and we're going to open curly braces and we, what this means is that everything inside the body tag in our HTML is going to have the following style right so I'm going to say um, let me uh, turn this off I'm going to say display flex right if I reload my application uh, we see that it changed a little bit now we are going to add another um, another um, property to this style and we are gonna say background for example just just so we can see what's going on background like this and I'm gonna uh, say a color for example in this case blue just to see what happens if I go he here and reload my uh, my page we can see that we have a blue background uh, which looks ugly <laughs> and I'm gonna set it to white again that looks better I'm gonna leave it like that and since we since we want the items to be in a column in a column way I'm gonna say flex direction column and I missed here an N in the column I didn't realize that but let's let's add another uh, another title for example in this case we are going to have these two titles and because we, we, we have the flex uh, uh, style here, we need to add a column di direction so that our, um, our style knows that we want the items to be in a column form, right? So I'm going to add my N here. If I reload my website, we can see that we have our items in a column direction. Perfect. That's good. Uh, and um, I'm going to for now I guess just leave it like that we can go to the to our index HTML and add some things that we're gonna need actually I'm gonna add a margin here margin zero and uh, color it's gonna be uh, 333 which is something close to black and the color is going to just apply to the fonts and text align center so if I reload we can see that we have our uh, text to the center and we have that new color that we just add perfect now um, let's go back to our um, terminal and since we are reloading uh, our application every time that we make some changes I'm gonna use this uh, library called Browser Sync that is gonna help me to reload my website on my Chrome every time that I save or I make a change in my in my files, right? So if you don't have it, you can install it by by running the command npm install globally Browser Sync. Now that you install that um, library, you can just run this command that I have here, like this, in your folder that and now as you can see we are listening to the um, local host 3000 so every time we make a change in this um, this file or inside this carpet we are going to reload automatically our, our website and so so that we are gonna save a lot of time because we don't have to be going and hit reload every time we change something right now uh, I say black, I hit save, and we can see that every time I save, uh, we are getting the reload right there. Perfect. So now I'm going to close my terminal, 
now that we have that we can start uh, really working on our game right so the first thing that we are going to need is like for example here we can see that we have just one text that says Epic Game and then we have pretty much all the functionality or the game. And all that functionality is going to be inside a canvas. In HTML we have a tag called canvas and a canvas is going to allow us to draw and have the functionality of the ball and the player, right? So let's declare a canvas and I'm going to give it an ID so that we can refer to this canvas from our main.js and from our styles, right? So I said canvas and we don't see anything, right? But if I hit inspect here in my browser and I select, I hit select, we can see that we have here a canvas. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see. You can see that we have the canvas, but at the moment this canvas is white so we don't see it but we have it here in our elements. So let's give it an ID. I'm gonna say here in my canvas, um, just, um, just to, to can access or change it inside our main in styles. I'm gonna give it an ID called, and call it my canvas, just like that. Hit save. I'm gonna close my terminal here so we can see a little bit more of what we are doing. And now I'm gonna apply a style specifically to my canvas. So how can we do that? We know that we give it an ID and it's called my canvas, right? So to select an HTML element by ID, we can use the hashtag sign and then the name of the ID. In this case, it's gonna be my canvas now we can add styles inside these curly braces so for now just to see what happens i'm going to add a background so right um right no background border of five pixels and i'm going to give it a color solid three 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 right if i hit save now now we can see that we have that border now we can see our canvas and we can still add some more stuff like margin zero auto hit save this margin zero auto is going to help us to have our canvas centered no matter what size of width we have in our screen our canvas it's always going to be at the center i'm going to add a border radius radius of um one rem right like hit save we have not we have that nice rounded and pretty much that's all I need for the style of my canvas. Um, maybe we come back to that later if we want to add some some style. Now let's go uh, to our main JS. Let's go to our main JS and let me check this just one second. We want to uh, start. Uh, give it giving it to giving give to our canvas uh, width and height right we need to connect or have an instance of this canvas in our main js so i'm gonna go to my main js and say canvas equal to document which which we refer to to our html saying by doc, document and then dot get element by id and we are gonna get the element canvas by the id my canvas if you remember we use that id perfect so now that we have this instance of the canvas we can say canvas dot, dot height and set the height of this canvas to 600 for example of course you can play with these values and if i hit save now um, nothing happens and that's because i i wrote it you spell it wrong right so it's height like that now we can see that we have 600 pixels of height and i'm gonna set a width of for now i'm going to say 500 of width so let's say canvas width dot width equal to 500. if i hit save we have that nice uh canvas of 
six, 600 by 500 pixels. Perfect. So that's how we access to HTML elements by ID. And this is how we change properties of these elements, right? We can do this with whatever uh, element we want in the index HTML. So now we're going to need a context and we are going to say equal to canvas dot uh, get animations. I mean, get context. And here we are going to specify that we want to have the context of this canvas uh, on uh, called 2D, the 2D context, right? So we have to say here 2D like that. And don't worry if you don't understand everything about this uh, context, you're going to have a better understanding um, by just watching and, and see what's going on in the future in this video, right? More, more forward in this video. So now that we have this context, um, we can check what we need. We're going to need a player, right? And we are going to need a ball as well. And, that, and we are going to need some controls to be able to move the player. And that's pretty much all we need, right? So let's go back to our uh, local host here. And let's start by creating our player in our bolt. Of course, we can create everything inside the main JS file, but it's not recommended because it's going to be a lot of code and we can get lost easily if we don't split our code base. So let's create another uh, file JS and call it player. And this is, and this is going to be the file where we are going to declare or create our player. Now that, that I create this um, player JS, I need to add it to my index.js in my HTML. So I'm going to say player.js, I add another script tag, just like that. Now we can go to the player and start creating the attributes that this player is going to have, right? So this is going to be a class. And again, guys, if you are not familiar with classes in JavaScript, don't worry, just keep following what I'm doing and you're going to get it super easily, right? So this class is going to be called player. And every class has to have this method called constructor. Constructor. So I'm going to say constructor. And this is a function. So we have to open and close parentheses. And we can get some stuff in this parentheses like values that we are going to need for this player. In this case, we are going to need a position for the player. Position on the, on the axis x and position on the axis y. Then we are going to need a velocity. And all right, no, 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 never mind. We're, we're not going to need a velocity, just a width and height. And what else? Because we, it's a rectangle, right? We can add a color as well. So we can pass a color whenever we want to create a player. And we can specify what color do we want the player, right? So now we have these properties. And we now need to initialize all the values of this player to these values that we are getting. So the way we do that is by saying this dot x equal to x, this dot y equal to y, this dot width equal to width, and so on and so forth. You get it, right? Basically, what we are doing here is just initializing this player to the values that we are passing to the constructor, right? So this player is going to have this x position, this y position, this width, this height, and this color. All right. So let's finish. This dot height equal to height, and this dot color equal to color. Perfect. We have this constru constructor finished. Now um, we are going to need a method that is going to help us to draw this player, and we are going to call this method draw. It's going to be a function inside this class. And to draw this player, we are going to need a canvas, specifically a context of a canvas. Canvas. So we pass this context by, um, in, by, as a parameter in this draw function. Now we can draw our um, 
player by saying context.beginPath. And these methods are methods from the context of the canvas. So if you if you don't see, I mean, if you don't know these methods, don't worry. Basically, what we are saying here is that we are going to start um, to draw uh, a shape, right? And here we are specifying that the shape is going to be a rectangle. So we have to pass um, the position, the uh, the position in at the axis x and at the axis y. And we have to pass as well the width and height, right? So I'm going to say width, this dot width, this dot height, right? Let me change this for this. <laughs> and there we, and there, we, and there, and that's it, guys. This is our rectangle. And now we want to change the color as well. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna put a semicolon here, context dot um, fill style. And here we can specify the color of this shape, and the color is gonna be equal to this dot color, just like that. Now, context dot fill, just to make sure that we uh, get the color in all this shape, and that's pretty much all we need to draw our player. Now I'm going to export this uh, class by saying export player. Now I'm going to go here to my main and I'm going to import this player that I just create. And I'm going to hit save. And something important here guys is that you have to put player.js um, in the import because uh, otherwise we're going to get an error. So now um, I didn't realize about that. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to create um, a player. So I'm going to say const player equal to new player. In this player, it's going to take the values in, of x, y, width, and height, and color, if you remember. So I open parentheses, and as you can see here, we are getting what, we, what this player is expecting from us, right? So I'm gonna initialize these values to be 250 on the x axis and 250 because we know that we have a width of 500 in our canvas. So I'm gonna pass, um, I, I want my player in the middle, so that's why I passed 250. And for the y axis, I'm gonna pass 550 because I want it uh, as low as possible and for the width, for now, we can say 100 and height of 100, 150 or 15, whatever. You can play with these values, All right? And for the color, for now, I'm gonna say red just to see what happens. And like I told you guys, I didn't set, I didn't put my import um, .js, so that's why we don't see our player. And Another thing that I forgot to do uh, is that I need to change something in my index.html. Let's see if I can say... So before I do, before I do that, I'm going to uh, create this function animate. And we need to create this function uh, animate as well. Because uh, we are going to have mo movement, right? So we are going to need to put everything inside this function animate and I'm going to start by saying player dot draw if you remember we made this method right here inside the, the player and I'm going to pass the context of my canvas to this player now if I hit save uh, we see that nothing happens and let's see what's going on here we are uh, drawing the player, but uh, like I said at the beginning, we need to. Um... All right, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna call here request animation frame, and this function, what's gonna do for us is that it's gonna call this function animate, 
again and again and again. It's, it's like it's going to create a loop of animate. So it's going to be calling this function every time or every frame. And now that we have this uh, request animation frame, we, we are sure that we can have uh, animations inside our canvas. Now, the thing that I forgot to do is to add the type module on these uh, scripts. And because we are exporting, we need to add this type uh, module property to the scripts. And here, I add .js to my player. And if I hit save now, we can see that our player is being drawn inside uh, our canvas, like that. So now, guys, we can just keep working on our player, like by creating our controls and then creating our ball, right? So now that we are, um, now that we have our player, I'm gonna add another file, and I'm gonna call it controls.js, and this is gonna be a class, as you can guess, and this class is going to help us to create the instance of the controls that we are gonna be using in our player, right? So let's uh, let's start by saying class controls, and we are going to have a constructor as well. If you remember uh, the player, and of course we need to add the script to our HTML before anything. So I'm gonna say uh, controls.js. Hit save. Let's go back to controls and let's declare our constructor. And for the controls, we are not gonna get anything um, in the constructor, but as a parameter, we're just gonna need two variables to keep track if the user is pressing the left arrow and a, and the right arrow, right? So I'm gonna start by saying this dot left and this dot right equal to false. Because at the beginning, of course, we are um, the user is not gonna be pressing anything, right? Until the game starts. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to start creating the methods that are going to help us to keep track of the controls, right? So this method, it's gonna be private, which means that no one can access to this function from another file or from whenever, from wherever. And we do that by adding this hashtag at the beginning of this function. And let's start by saying document.onkeyDown. This method is going to return us an event whenever the user pressed um, one key down, right? So we want to get something whenever something happens, and we are going to be listening for specifically the left and right arrow. So we can say event dot key like that, and we we are going to have a switch, right? In the case that we are uh, getting the left arrow. We can say case and the event and the event key is our left so we have to put it like that we are gonna say this dot left equal to true which means that the user is pressing the arrow right and uh, we can uh, keep going and we can say break after that we're gonna have another case in the case that uh, the user is pressing the right arrow, so we can say arrow right. And um, like this, and I'm gonna say this is right equal to true. And break. Like that. Let me, um, let me uh, call this function inside this constructor. I'm gonna say this dot uh, add keyboard listener like that, and we have to put the hashtag at the beginning because it's private, right? So that's how we call it. And let me fix this error that I'm getting here because I put this um, I didn't put this semicolon like that, and now um, uh, as you can see we are going to need as well another uh, listener to the event when the user release the key. So we are going to say on key up because the other event was on key down. And when this happens, we are going to set um, the values to false again. 
right? This way we secure that whenever the user presses and release the key, we're gonna set it to false again and it's not gonna stay true forever, right? So now that, let me fix these curly braces that I messed up here. And now we have our controls finished. That's pretty much all we need for the controls. So now we can go to the player and import our controls uh, because we are gonna use it in the player, right? So I'm gonna say this dot controls. I'm gonna add this property to the player and I'm gonna set it equal to new controls. That is my class that we just created. Like that. So let's import it up here. Import controls from controls dot js. Right. Um, and I forgot to uh, add my dot js right there. Let's see what's going on. Alright, so if we inspect our our uh, website, we can see that we have an error here that says um, fail to load resource. And that's because we <clears throat> didn't export this class controls. So that's a way of you can um, see what's going on in your code. You can inspect and see the console. So now that we are exporting it, we are not, we just need to add the JS and there we go. We can now see that we don't have that error. And if, for, ex for example, if I go um, and see, if I want to see if something is happening or my listener, it's, it's doing something, we can use the console as well. I'm gonna go to my controls and we can simply say, here, whenever this uh, function happens, we can do a console log, and we are going to put in the console um, the event or this dot left, for example. If I hit save now, and I'm going here and press the left arrow, we can see that we get a true, and whenever I re I release it, we get a false, or whenever I press another another arrow. So that's, that's another thing, another good thing to know that you can use the console to check what's going on in your application. Now let's go back to the player and actually do something when whenever the user presses the keys, right? So now uh, we can do it's add this function that is gonna be called update. And this function is gonna help us to update the position of this current player depending on the controls. So we are going to say this.controls.left. In the case that this is true, we want to move the player on the x, um, x axis and to the left, right? So we can say um, this.x is going to be equal to whatever this.x was minus 5. And in the case that the user is pressing the right key, we're going to do the same, but instead of subtracting 5, we are going to add 5 to the position x, like that. Perfect. So now if I go here and uh, try to move the player, nothing happens because this method has never been called in our main JS. Remember that we are, um, that here we have our instance of our player, but never we are never calling this uh, update method. So right here, uh, <clears throat> we are drawing our player. So be, before, uh, or the first thing that I want to do when when we are calling this animate function is to update my player. That way we, we don't miss anything of the keys. And now if I go here and try to move to the left and then to the right, we see that that happens. And that happens because we are updating the position but at the same time, the canvas, it's uh, changing the width. So one easy way to fix this is just to put the canvas.width equal to 500 inside of our animate function. This means that no matter what happens to the player or the position, our canvas is going to uh, have the same width. 
Now, if I hit save now, and this this canvas that width is gonna help us to clean and have this effect right now, right? You can see this canvas that width equal to 500 like a cleaner. And there we go, guys. We have now the, this nice uh, control functionality in our player. Now we need to add our ball. So let's go back here and add a ball.js. As you can guess, this is going to be a class as well. So let's say class ball, open curly braces, and we are going to have a constructor. This ball is going to have an x, y position, and it's going to have a velocity on the x axis, on the x axis, and velocity on the y axis. So we can say vx and vy. And because this ball is going to be a, a circle, we are going to need a radius and, of course, a color. So we can initialize this ball with a color. Right? Don't forget that we have to add this uh, file to our index. So let's say here ball.js, like that. And in the ball, before we do anything, we can export this ball so we don't have to deal with something or some error <laughs> because we forgot to export it. And here, as you can guess, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing that we did before. We're going to add, I mean, initialize the values to our ball. Now we're gonna need a function to draw this ball as we did with the player. We're gonna get a context of the canvas. Now we can begin or path, or in other words, begin to draw this ball inside our canvas. So let's say this dot arc, because uh, this is gonna be a circle. So we, we're gonna say arc. The other one was a rectangle. And this thing is gonna take an X, Y, and a radius. So let's pass our values that we are getting in the constructor, like this and this dot uh, radius, like that. Now, start angle, we're gonna say zero. Now we need to pass an end angle, end angle. And this, in order to be a, um, a sphere, we need to say P, so let's say math, math like that, dot P, multiplied by two. And lastly, our counterclockwise. This is a Boolean, so we are going to say true. Now we can say this. We can uh, close that. And um, let's let's change the color. So context.field style equal to this dot color. <coughs> Context.field. Like that. Perfect. Now we need to say um, close path, just to make sure that this is going to be a close circle, right? Close arc. Perfect. Now we can save this and now we should be able to see this ball inside our canvas if we um, if we just um, just add it. But before we add it, we're going to say this.x and is equal to this.x plus this.x uh, this dot velocity on x and this dot y is going to be equal to this dot y plus the this dot velocity on y axis. And this is because this move this ball is going to be moving up, down, left, and right. So, so, so we need to be uh, updating the position on the x and y depending on the velocity in which axis, right? So now we can go here to our main. And let's import our ball like that. Now that we have our ball, we need to uh, create an instance of this ball right here. So before the player, I'm going to say const ball equal to, to new ball. And we are going to need to pass the values of x, y, vx, vy radius and the color, right? So let's start by saying uh, we want the x position to be the same as the player, but the y, we want it to be uh, 100 because we don't want it to down. We're, we would lose just just when, when the game starts. 
and we're gonna say set the velocity to three for now. Again, you can play with these values, guys. With these values, guys, and the color black for now. Now that we have the instance of our bool, we can draw it inside our canvas, inside our animate function. So right here, before my player, I'm gonna say ball dot draw, and I'm gonna pass the context of my canvas on my canvas like that. And if I hit save now, we can see that we have the ball. But if I reload, we are getting the uh, position updated every time because we are adding the speed. If you remember here in the draw function, we have this dot x and this dot y, and this function is being called every frame. So that's why the position of the ball is changing every frame, right? So now we can say here, uh, in order to make this ball bounce at the edges of the canvas, we can access the position of this ball. And let's say if this position y plus this dot velocity on y is more than the, than the height or of the canvas, uh, we want to bounce the ball, right? So I'm going to say if it's more than 600 or in the case of the ball, same thing. We, we, we can say in the case that um, the ball bounces all the way down. For now, we don't care, we don't care about the, the user. I mean, the player, we just want to bounce the ball inside the canvas, right? So I'm going to put only the the width and height of the canvas. So I'm going to paste this again. But now in the case that um, it's more than 600 or less than, let's say 10 or zero, and, and I get this error because I didn't close this if statement. So what do we, what do we want to do in the case that the ball is hitting an edge of the, of the canvas with so simply we want to set the velocity of, um, of the ball to be equal to the same velocity to the, to the other, to, to the same value, but negative like this one. So this is going to do that or ball, this is going to make that our ball is going, is going to bounce whenever it hits these, um, these values, right? Now, if I reload, you can see nothing happens, and that's because we also need to val validate the x, um, the x position and the um, vx like this velocity on x. And here we are going to have the height of the of the canvas, and the height is uh, six hundred uh, or six hundred. I don't know. I'm not sure. So for now, let's let's just say 500 up here, and I'm gonna set on the x on the x axis. I'm gonna put it to 600 because it's the height and width 500. Let let's see if that works. So in the case it's more than 600, and uh, this dot x plus this dot vx is less than zero, I guess we are going to change the, the velocity on the x-axis, on the x-axis, like that. So let's hit save. And as you can see, our ball is bouncing, but as you can imagine, I, I set the boundaries a little wrong. It's 600 on the top, and on the x, it's 500 because it's the width. And there we have this nice bounce effect inside our canvas perfect guys so now now we want to check whenever we hit the user right because now the user is invisible for us now let's do that let's let's add some validation to see if the ball hits the player to do that we are gonna need to access to the position current position of the player and the current position of the ball the perfect place to do that it's going to be inside our main uh, main function in our animate function because we have because here have the two here we have the two instances of the ball and the player and in the same context of course so we can always check 
if they are in the same position or they hit the same position, right? So right here, after my player, I'm gonna have this validation. I'm gonna start by saying if, right? And we can access to the ball and the player. So let's say if, mm -hmm, whenever the position of the ball, I'm gonna start by saying ball at the X position plus ball at the current velocity on X it's more than player at the position x minus player dot width divided by two maybe or just you can leave it like that because we don't we don't want the the ball to bounce too early or too late it's gonna look it's gonna look uh, awkward right so let's say divided by two and we're gonna have a couple more validations Let's say um, here, uh, after that, we want to check if the ball is more than the player X and we also want to check the Y position, right? So let's, let's start by saying here, um, ball at the position X as well and ball dot velocity X, it's less than player dot X plus player dot width. And we're gonna do the same with the a with the y axis. And whenever we have this uh, collision, we want to simply set the ball to be the the same velocity but negative, right? So, and that's how we get this bouncing effect. Now let's try to hit uh, actually the player with the with the ball. But as you can see there. Uh, there we have it. yeah so we can try to bounce like that and it seems like it's it's working sometimes maybe we we need to validate some some things here maybe i'm missing something because we don't have this nice um this nice bouncing we need to check the, the dimensions of the of the player so as you can see there it's like it's not working completely fine. So what I'm gonna do it's like a, is that I'm going to come here to my uh, if statement whenever I, I'm checking the collision. And for now we can just simply delete the divided by two for example, just to see what happens. Um, so let's see see what else we can do. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a function to to get a random color whenever we hit the, the ball with the player, right? Whenever we have this collision. And this function is gonna um, it's gonna help us to change the current color of the player and the ball. Alright. So we know that each color has uh, some letters. And numbers numbers from 0 to 9 and letters from A to F and each color starts with the hashtag symbol so I'm gonna say for I equal to 0 all the way to I less than 5 and if you are not familiar with for loops don't worry this is just a simple loop that is gonna uh, run six times everything we have inside this for loop is gonna run six times because I'm saying I less than 6 and we are going to be adding to the color a random letter and a random number so that we can get a, a random color. So I'm going to say letters at the position random, which is going to be math floor of math of random plus uh, multiplied by 16, right? Don't worry too much about this function. Basically, we are just generating a color and we are returning. Now we can use this function and whenever we have this uh, collision with the player we can say bot.color bolt.color equal to get random color like that now also we can change the the color of the player whenever we have this collision so we can get a random color 
And if I hit save now, we can see that we have these um, random colors every time we have the collision. All right. Of course, we need to um, validate or check um, the collisions, but for now, I'm going to leave it just like that. And I want to also change the the color of the canvas, right? The border of the canvas. How can we do that? If you remember, we also have a instance of the canvas right here. So we can just simply say canvas.color. I mean, canvas is going to be a little different because we need to add to the style and then add to the border and set it equal to same width, which is five pixels, solid but the color is going to be random, so we can call the function get random color just like that. Now, if, if I hit save every time we hit the hit with the player, we are getting this new color on the on the canvas, on the border, right? Let's see. There we go. Let's try, let's try to check what's going on with the collisions. There we go. We are changing the the border color every time we hit the player. So like I said before, we can delete this divided by two just to see what happens. And as you can see, we have a better, um, had a better hit right now on the player like that. And as I said, guys, um, you can play with these values, of course, but now we have a better collision <laughs> except for that one and that's uh, pretty much all the functionality that we needed so now we can just uh, st uh, work with additional stuff like having a having a score and of course detect whenever we lose right so this this big if statement that we have here is going to help us to detect collisions with the user with the player the player and we're gonna have something similar whenever the player hits the bottom of the canvas. That means that we are that, that it's game over, right? So we are gonna call it detect game over. And of course, um, and again, guys, uh, you can check the code of this tutorial on my platform called with Beto. If you don't want to write all this by yourself, although I encourage you guys to do, to do so because that's how we learn. But if you want to just make sure that you have it right, you can check the code in my platform called with Beto. The link is in the description. So this if it's gonna look the following way. We're gonna say we're gonna be checking if the position of the ball in the axis y is more than the height of the canvas minus 10. Because if we set to the height, it's it's never gonna happen because we have the validation to bounce before that happens so that's why i put minus 10 and now as you can see every time that we hit we have this alert that sets game over but we have to press okay and okay okay because we are uh keep we our ball is it's still in the same position so that's we are getting this this error i mean this loop of the alert so let's reset the ball position every time we lose to so be ball at the position x and the position y then we want to set the, the direction on the x, x uh, axis to be 3 as well and same for the y axis so vy equal to 3 now uh, we want to reset as well the bold dot color to be a uh, i don't know maybe just for now we can say light pink every time we start again we can reset the player position as well and color, I'm gonna say play color, light, gray. Now, um, what else can we do here? We can say player at the position X, it's gonna be equal to 400, and player at the position Y, it's gonna be equal. Actually, we don't need to change the player at the position Y because we never change that, right? What else can we do here? So let's let's save that and hit OK. And whenever we lose, let's try to lose here. All right, it's working. Now let's try to lose just to see what happens. I'm going to hit OK. 
and the game is reset but I reset I reset the position wrong because I'm I'm saying that I want the ball uh, on the X equal to 700 and that's more than my canvas has of width so let's change that to be we have width 500 and height 600 so let's reset it at, at the same values that we had at the beginning which is 250 and if I restart and try to lose again oh that was weird right when I hit OK and there we have it guys mm -hmm. every time I press reset we are getting this um, this nice reset effect perfect now uh, right we can change uh, something else here we can also say player x equal to 250 just to set it in the middle let's try it again all right let's hit okay and there we have the player perfect all right it seems like it's working now guys now let's try to finish this project just by adding a score right every time we detect this collision with the player we can have some sort of um, score i'm gonna also delete this divided by two let's see how that works now all right i'm just trying to make sure that the edges of the of the player are working fine of course you can play with this in your house in your project you can make this better if you spend a little more time with this it seems like it's uh, kind of working right now so now let's go to the, to our index html and let's create a an h an h1 just to keep the score visual to the user i'm going to call this h1 uh, zero at the beginning and i'm going to give it an id let's give it an id called score hit save and there we have our score now we can go to our um, main JS and access this um, this score by ID, right? So let's create another variable right here. Let's say const score equal to document dot element by ID get element by ID, and the ID is the score, right? So now we have the instance of the score. Now, now we can simply uh, create another variable to keep track of the score. Let's say points, for example, equal to zero at the beginning because we don't have any points at the beginning. And now, every time we hit the user right here, we have this collision. We want to increment the points by one and we want to set our score to the number of points that we have, right? So we are going to say points plus plus and score.inner HTML is going to be equal to points. Points just like that. And if I hit save now, let's go back here and reload. We now see that we are uh, incrementing the points every time we hit the player. Perfect, guys. So that means that our game is completely finished right now of course you can change um, the colors you can add more stuff if you want you can make it multiplayer the limit it's our um, imagination right so I want to leave this video here guys I hope you like this video and remember that you can go to code with Beto my platform to check the code of this video and please uh, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video, right? Bye.